What's up YouTube, Jay Traveling here. Today I wanted to show you the mining ram that I custom built. Uh, it's got my P106 90s on it right now. Mining Ethereum Classic, they're doing very well. I showed them off in my one video after they were put back together. Um, so they're getting good hash rates. Right now I have an Azrock. Uh, it's that H81 Pro BTC motherboard on it. I do have eight gigabytes of Corsair RAM on it that I got cheap on Facebook Marketplace. Running on Hive OS, so it's running off the USB with a EVGA 1000 watt G3. Uh, so this is, and I'll put in the description below the article I found online that showed me everything that I needed to use. Uh, I did modify it a little bit. Uh, I'll show you some measurements. I have my tape measure here of what I used and the other gear I used was my impact gun here uh, the tips for it and then my my drill I have a box of self tapping screws here uh, you can see the sizes right on there I did use a level uh, it's a little more not as necessary as you need and then my drill bits so right now I have my you can see my 1 8 eighth drill bit that's all my drill right now. And I'll, I'll explain to you when I use that and how I used it. And I also use my 3 16 drill bit. Uh, so when I put this together, it, it took a little bit since it's my first one, but it was fairly simple. And I have seen people just rest the motherboard right onto uh, the wood, but I just threw a piece of cardboard down just to be safe so I know it's non-conductive. Uh, and this is just sitting there. I was gonna build something else to come up so I can mount the power supply but realistically these things don't move so it's not that big a deal i just let it sit there uh obviously you can see the cables are just kind of a mess right now i didn't build anything as far as cable management i couldn't route cables underneath because then the wood would be sitting on it uh as you can see there's really no no gap down there to be running any any type of like cables under it and you do notice the risers don't have any support under them. You can see like the heat's getting adhesive off of them. So, so this is like coming up. The pads are coming off a little bit. Uh, but I did that for a reason. That's just so if there were an issue with the rig and I need to swap out a riser, it's not as hard. Like if you look at my Veta frames, you can see that they're sitting on a piece of metal. It makes it a little harder to swap out a riser. So. I kind of just left it so it was easy to do. And you'll see, I have the self-tapping screws up here and they fit nicely into the, the little hole there to mount it. And then this piece of wood that just helps support the uh, GPU so that they will wobble a little bit when I, when I move it, but they won't come off the frame or sag at all. Uh, so what I did is you can see the holes drilled here. So these holes with the wood, I didn't drill, I didn't pre-drill any wood, but I did drill through this aluminum. So this is right angle aluminum that you can get at any Home Depot. I got all the parts for this at Home Depot. I got the self tapping screws and the aluminum. Uh, the aluminum was actually right next to the screws at my local Home Depot. And it's, I believe, 1 16th uh, thickness and then 3 quarter inch uh, width. So this is 3 quarter inch and that's 3 quarter inch. And you can see uh the three by one that i used fit right into it so i got four of these they were four foot long and i even had after i was done cutting a little bit left over so i had four of those and then i needed for my measurements two three by ones two eight foot three by ones uh one was fully used to cut these six pieces this piece this piece and then there's four down here you can kind of see in the back that there's four of them. Um, these four and this, when I cut them to the lengths of six, I did 16 inches and I'll show you right here. So I cut this wood 16 inches. And it's gonna be a little bit over because of the aluminum, but I cut these 16 inches on a miter saw. Uh, I set up my miter saw and just kind of used it as a chop saw, measured out the 16 inches and cut each one. So they, they measured exact. And then these holes 
on the aluminum here. These ones I used my 3 16 So I did that just so that these self tappers would go through the aluminum and not, not drill into it because I didn't really need the aluminum to be as secure on those because it was gonna drill into the wood. And you can see on the self tapper how it has the head on it. So that's anchoring to the aluminum anyway and then securing to the wood. So the frame's nice and steady and nice and sturdy. And then the wood I just held up and let the screw self tap into it. Uh, I didn't do any drilling to the wood. I just let, let the screw do the self tapping. So if you're not familiar with self tapping screws, you can see on the head here, it's a little different than a normal screw. It's made to actually tap into whatever you're drilling into so you don't have to actually pilot hole it. This will this will act as your drill and screw all at once. That's why they're self-tapping. Well, that's why people call them self-tapping. I don't think it actually says it on the back. So it says modified tusk screw. All right, so up here, this is where I used what's on my, my drill here now. My one si uh, one eighth, my one eighth bit. I used up here and I drilled and I actually didn't mount the graphics cards right away. What I did was put the uh, hole in, I, I lined it up. I have two dead P106s over here. So I used these as my, my cards to, to line it all up. So I actually held it on the frame to make sure it would sit flush and then marked it and then used my 1 8 to drill through it. And then I actually used my self tapper because this time I needed it to tap into the aluminum. I used it after the pilot hole was drilled. And if, if you're not used to construction, a pilot hole is just pretty much your guide hole. So that if I were to just take a self tapper and try and screw into this without putting a pilot hole, I'd be all over the place with it. So I used the pilot hole, I drill one in, and then I took my, my screw and drilled the rest of the way. So it actually widened that pilot hole a little bit to perfectly fit this, it'll perfectly fit this screw at that point. Um, and I used my impact gun to do that. I didn't torque it down. You don't want to, I, I kind of just, you don't want to just you know, slam it. I kind of just like slowly ease into the trigger and slowly go into it. Uh, you don't want to just ram this in like you were hanging drywall. Uh, you know, I didn't even put the screw in all the way the first time. I just got it so it went through the aluminum and then I backed it back out so that I knew I was be able to, to mount these securely. So I can actually, just like my VETA frames, I can actually take these screws in and out and re-secure them. Uh, down bottom, you'll see, uh, I'll go to this side. Down bottom, you'll see, it's just resting along the wood. Uh, I was gonna do another self-tapper here and tap it in, but one, this this would be in the way, and two, I don't think it was, it's necessary, really. Uh, I don't get much movement out of these and really it just sits on the shelf so I don't need that much secured on it. Um, that's why I didn't, I, I even thought about, I have risers upstairs for motherboards from uh, other builds that I've done that, that give me extra. I thought about putting risers in the wood and actually securing the motherboard but it, it's really just a waste of time at that point. Uh, it just causes more errors so like this one right here that I'm having issues with and that's why you see this one disconnected. I don't know if that's a motherboard issue, but if it is, I have to take all the screws out to get that motherboard out, where this one, I would just disconnect everything and have a different motherboard in here in, in seconds. Uh, it would pretty much take me under a minute to swap out this motherboard, uh, as long as my other one's ready, but I always keep a couple ready on the shelf. Uh, but I mean, if anyone's interested in building something like this, it's, it's fairly simple, and you can comment in the comments below, and I'll, I'll help you out along with you know different advice and different things I did. Um, but I mean, the self tap and screws work great. Three by ones are, are fine for what we're doing. Uh, and you know, the, the beauty of building this is, uh, you can't really see too well, but you can see where my cards are, my VETA frames. Uh, and like down here with these cards, they kind of are where they are, where this one, since I drilled these myself, I gapped these so that this was an inch from the wood and then I got this one so it was an inch from the wood and then I measured out uh, the distance between and just divided it by five because I knew six more cards were going in. 
So I measured from here to here, divided it by five, and that's how I knew how far to gap them to be equal. But but the best part about building my own frame was I could have went wider with this and gapped these more. I, I didn't, I decided not to. And we'll, we'll see. I based my measurements on the VETA frame. So this is actually 26 inches wide, which is pretty much where my VETA frame is. Uh, I also measured it so that if I wanted to put it on this shelf, I could just slide it right on there. But you can see I kind of got a bunch of crap on it right now. And I don't want to use the top shelf because of the water lines. And this one has all my elect electro uh, electricity on it. I got my bank. I got my other bank for my uh, 120 volt. And I got my network switch. So I'm probably just going to push it to the back here and move the, the uh, TV screen that I use out a little bit. And then I actually bought a mouse pad. I'm probably going to get another one to cover here. I'm going to clean this up and cover this so I can build computers and stuff on it. More mining rigs. And have this as my work area and get rid of the rest of this junk. Um, but... I I'll show you my other measurements also. So we know we went 26 wide, we went 16 uh, uh, depth, we went 16. But we'll see what we went as far as height. And I can, I base this off of my VETA also. I measure, I'm at 14 and a half. So I mean, you can go as high as you want, really. I could have made this like 12 inches. I, the link I'm gonna show you in the description of where I got the idea and based it on his model, you'll see that I didn't follow all his measurements. Uh, his measurements were slightly different. And then I measured my my VETA frame, like I said, and based mine more off of that. Uh, his was actually, I think a little, uh, wasn't as wide and it wasn't as deep, which is fine. It works for his rigs. Uh, I just wanted a little bit more airflow and I also wanted the height so I could work in it. Um, once it's on this shelf, I mean, it's not that big a deal. It's not like I, I can't stack these like I can my VETA frame because it would just interfere with the cabling. You can see like I can't just throw another rig right on top because then it's on top of my, my wiring. So I'd have to have it on the shelf anyway. I could have, if I wanted to do stacking ones, I could have lowered this and had this come up a little higher and like notch this out uh, with an angle grinder which uh, to cut the aluminum, you can either use an angle grinder or I actually just used an aluminum saw that I had in my garage and I just cut the aluminum. Uh, it was fairly simple, it took me, didn't take me long. The, the one mistake, I wouldn't say it was a mistake is I did it down here. I did it on this workbench and I used my table vise here. You can see my, my towel in it now. I, I was putting the aluminum in there. I didn't want to mark up the aluminum. Uh, but you can see all the little metal shavings along the desk here. Uh, probably not good to have that around my mining rig, so I'm going to get a vacuum and clean that up when I clean up this this table. And after this, I built my workshop in my garage, so you guys will see my one video. So I'll end up just building these out there. But I plan on building another one of these. And when I do my next one, I'm, I'm probably going to do a, the video of me actually building it, so you guys can get a better uh, see better how I can do it. But I'm going to make a smaller version of this to only fit probably like three graphics cards on it i'm just going to use it as a test bench that one i may do one where i actually have support on the riser i'm not sure yet i might just base it on this model because it's easier to build but i'm probably going to do just one motherboard and i have a smaller power supply i have a 650 watt uh, corsair semi-modular power supply i'm going to use because i'm only going to be running one at max three gpus on it. it's just going to be used to test them it's going to be my test bench uh, so when I build out, I'll try and make a video of me actually building and explaining what I'm doing in more detail. But just to recap, uh, how this is built. So right angle loon on Home Depot, this was like $7 per each one. Uh, the three, three by ones, and when you're getting these, make sure you get good ones. They, they sell some really crappy ones at Home Depot. You just gotta really just pick through a bunch and get good ones. But this is $2 a stick, so that was $4 total. This was, I said $7, so 28, so we're at $30 total. Uh, if you don't have self-tapping screws, I can't remember how much this was, it was probably like two two or three dollars for the box. Uh, tools, if you don't have them, try and borrow them, because this, these are expensive. This impact gun, especially this DeWalt stuff, this was this is probably a you know, $150 impact gun. This drill was pro probably another 100 bucks. This kit I got on sale, uh, I use the gold tips. You don't need gold, gold tipped. Uh, 
this was on sale for like 15 bucks. Uh, I, I like to have these laying around anyway, but my last set over the use of time, drill bits just kept missing. And you can see why, because I just leave them on the bench here and then I can never find them. So those are, that's what you need. You can really, once you get a pilot hole in with these, you can really just use a screwdriver. Uh, they're, they're pretty simple to use, but I just use the impact gun because it's easier and quicker. But I'll put in the description the tools I used, the materials. I'll even do a total in what I actually paid in the description. But I'm, I'm sitting around $32, I think, to build this frame. And now remember, this one's built already. So you can see in this box how many screws I have left. So when I build another frame, that's a cost that I won't have to pay. So I'll get, I still have, from the two sticks, my, my second stick was only to cut this piece. So I can cut this piece out of that one stick. So my next one, I'll only need one of these and then another four of these. Since I'm making it smaller, I'm gonna see if I can get away with two since I do have these left over. So you can see like that four, like I still had some material. So that's obviously not, that's obviously trash now, but if I can just cut, you know, if I'm going smaller and I'm cutting here, I might be able to just get away with like a much smaller frame or maybe get the materials and build two test benches, who knows? But, you know, thanks for checking this video out. Hopefully, the, I call this the uh, Rig to Home Depot special. Uh, hopefully someone, you know, if you like it, you can build it. If you have any questions on how to build it or a little nervous at it, let me know. I can help give you some advice on building stuff since I'm no stranger to get my hands dirty with power tools. Um, but, you know, hopefully you guys like this frame. You know, it, I, I like it more than my Veta frame personally at this point, but... You know, let me know what you guys think you think if there's different things i can do while building the frame to make it better or what you guys think about or if you guys plan on building one but uh make sure you write in the comments below see your guys thoughts but thanks for checking this video out make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button um you know hit that bell icon so you see all the videos i'll see you next time